It's nine o'clock in the morning on a Sunday in Portland, and I am rushing into the shower. This is the first day of the first conference and the first trip that for the first time, an employer has paid me to attend and I am rushing to get ready. I shouldn't be rushing. Who schedules a conference on a Sunday at 9 a.m.? <laughs> Sundays are reserved for our Lord Jesus Christ and fabulous brunches. And since I haven't been keeping in touch with the former, I figure the latter shouldn't be forgotten, so I ordered a delicious room, sp room service spread to start my day. My wardrobe for the week has been laid out and pressed from the moment the suitcase unzipped. I brought with me three pairs of shoes, options for casual, smart casual, and dressy. <laughs> I shouldn't be rushing. My name badge is placed on top of my notebook and next to my water bottle so I don't forget it because apparently you need to wear it all the time or else they won't let you into any of the sessions or worse, the lunches. I've even picked out the pen I'm going to use, a cross a ballpoint. Both the pen and the notebook are gifts from my family engraved with my name, best to tokens of best wishes for the new job. But all this advanced preparation is turning out to be a waste because I'm still rushing, not because I'm worried I'll be late. Oh no, I'm certain I'll be late. If not miss the first session of my first adult conference entirely. I'm rushing into the shower because a guy I met online is coming over to my hotel room. He's coming over at 9 a.m. and we're going to get naked. And he's gonna be here in 10 minutes. After landing at the airport the day before, checking into the hotel and exploring the downtown area for a few hours, I decide like I always do when I'm in a new city to check out the local talent. Ironically, around the new year, I publicly proclaimed that the manhunt was over. I gave it all up, cold turkey, with no success whatsoever. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had plenty of sex, but it would be nice for once to have orgasms with a guy who wasn't going to leave right after, or give me a fist bump, <laughs> or say, catch you later, bruh. True story. Seriously, bruh, I was just inside you. <laughs> so I deactivated my accounts and deleted all my apps. No more right swipes, no more atoms, no more double tapping jockstrap bathroom mirror selfies, no more verse top MWMs that are VGL, HWP, DDF, HIV neg, UB2, cut and into WS. No more smiles or winks or pokes. No more no fats, no femmes. No more mask for mask only. No more headless torsos and faceless cocks only looking for friendship. No more. <laughs> but it doesn't count if I'm not in my hometown, right? <laughs> Fuck it. I think to myself, maybe I'll have a better luck out here. Maybe the scales of attractiveness are weighted differently in Oregon. And where I was like a six back home, maybe I'll be like a seven, eight, or an out of town nine. So with a press of a button, broop, goes the grinder. I spent the rest of that night online indiscriminately messaging guys. When you're this struck by lust, any decent looking pic taken in halfway decent lighting is worth the message. My grandpa who was a fisherman, taught me that if you cast enough lines, eventually you get a bite. <laughs> this online search makes me nostalgic for a time that I was never a part of, when cruising meant going to smoke-filled bars with pitch black back rooms. The, the time before online profiles when the only push notifications you would receive was the trade grinding against you on the dance floor, and the only guy taking dick pics was Robert Maplethorpe. A time when a simple look, a glance, a nod of the head was an elaborate, semiotic language of desire. It was a time when advances and rejections were not as easily ignored because there was a flesh and blood person standing in front of you and not a headless digital image. Just as I was about to give up, I refreshed the page and saw a fam new familiar face in the app. I recognized him immediately. I noticed him from earlier in the day as we were waiting at the front desk to check in. He was tall, at least 6'3", but his posture was slightly hunched forward 
as if all his life he was surrounded by shorter people and ducked down so not as to inconvenience them or make them think any less of themselves. Height is not a requirement for me as much, it is for, as much as it is for other people. I tend to like more practical things like a good smile or a juicy butt. <laughs> and I noticed that he definitely had both of those. His most noticeable quality was his hair. Buzzed on the sides, nice and tight, with the length on the top slip back, slicked back. It was also bleached and then colored a shade of blue somewhere between serenity and glacier. <laughs> not an easy look to get away with, but he wore it with such a plum that I could not help but be drawn to him. I thought that he might just be another guest of the hotel. But shortly after the lobby sighting, I saw him again later at the first timer's welcome reception. Not only was this tall, handsome man a guest of the hotel, but he was also attending the conference. I didn't talk to him then as I was too focused on the unique networking opportunity that this function represented <laughs> and thought I would express my desire into a tissue later that evening. <laughs> so imagine my good fortune to discover the tall man's smiling face staring back at me from my phone, little green dot telling me he's awake and less than brrr, 650 feet away. I sent him my usual bait. Hi, <laughs> my name is Joe. How are you today? And left it there. Before long, I fell asleep and I awake unsatisfied. Checking my phone, I noticed that I didn't get a response until about 8.45 that morning. Hi, Joe. I'm Cody. How's your morning going? I saw that he was still online, so I replied, wait, wait, oh, okay, I guess. Uh, I say, uh, I think we're here for the same conference. Yeah, I think we are. I thought you looked familiar. Well, this is a little awkward, meeting on here like this. Not awkward at all. <laughs> I just finished getting dressed myself. Now, time for escalation. Say, I, I don't know what your plans are for the day, but maybe we could grab some lunch or something. I'd be down to meet up. <laughs> that response would have been enough for me to count this one in the win column. But then it was his turn to escalate. What are you up to now? He typed. I replied with a raised eyebrow. Just finished breakfast. Nothing like room service on the per diem to start things off right. Cool. Mind if I swing by? Sure. Um, duh. Yes, of course. Here's my room number. Be there in a sec. Which brings me back to rushing into the shower. After having washed all the important areas, I quickly dry myself off and swish with some mouthwash. I put on a sweater, some jeans, an act that is mired in futility as much as it is politeness. I realized as I hurriedly straighten out my sheets and clean the room service tray that most normal people have this notion that hookups happen under a cloak of darkness. That somehow the night and all that it connotes about the unknown justifies the sub rosa nature of anonymous sex. Two consenting adults should know better than to flaunt their shamed craving in the light of day. Well, I guess that makes me a rebel. As a, as a glass of half-finished OJ and remnants of an English muffin are about to witness things that typically take place the evening prior to their consumption. <laughs> the sheer gluttony of the situation is not lost on me. I was not, it was not enough to have just had a large meal, but the audacity to think that I could still fit one more thing inside me. <laughs> on, Unlike with most of my sexual encounters, I don't feel unsatisfied after putting food in my mouth. <laughs> Maybe this time will be different. I hear shuffling outside my door. Tall Cody knocks three times. He must want me. <laughs> I open the door and he is even more delectable from zero feet away. I welcome him in with a flourished gesture that is typically reserved for HGTV hosts. His smile catches my eye immediately. It has a genuinely mischievous quality to it. I did not jump on this man the moment he walked in because I'm still not sure if I have read in between the lines correctly. 
So I lay on the bed and get comfortable, and he stands there next to me. We make the deferential small talk that you make. I learn that he's from the Bay Area, and that he has a side hustle giving massages. I'm not sure if it's those kinds of massages, but the rent is too damn high up there. <laughs> I also learned that he went out to a full nude male strip club the night before. I called my husband to tell him what I was doing. He said, cue record scratch. <laughs> he was so jealous, he even told me to get a lap dance. Oh, wow. <laughs> How understanding of him. Now, I don't have a problem with messing around with a guy that is partnered, even if they, have an if they have an open arrangement and they are honest about everything, then what's the big deal? I'm not under any delusion that I'm going to find the next great love of my life on a hookup app. This is for him what it is for me, a bit of out-of-town fun and nothing more. At the inevitable lull in conversation, Cody looks at me and then at his crotch and then back at me, smiling his shit-eating grin the whole time. He makes eyes at me and then leads my gaze toward his jeans, and I begin to unbutton his jeans. My God, do I love an button fly pair of jeans. <laughs> one by one, until finally I reveal his, oh, wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he says, closing his eyes, shit-eating grin disappearing. Get to it. It's a little after 10.30, and I definitely missed the first session. <laughs> Cody doesn't linger too long after, which is par for the course for me. I'm used to guys not wanting to get caught in the afterglow. He buttons himself up. I'm not the one rushing anymore. Not even a kiss goodbye. But no fist bump, though, which is progress. I sit there at the edge of the bed, unsatisfied, staring at my name badge and the notebook bleeding blue. If I leave in 30 minutes, I can probably make to the ballroom for lunch. And just as the feelings of shame and self-loathing start to make their way into my mind, I look at my phone and I see a new message from an unfamiliar face. I guess I'm going to miss the second session too. 